Okay. Hey, guys and girls. This is Will Tipton. Welcome back to my desktop. So our video today should be pretty quick and straightforward, I think. Uh, basically, we just need to install a couple things to set up our working environment. So you can see that I'm, I'm using Windows. Uh, so all of the all of the stuff I talk about today will be for Windows specifically. However, uh, you know the process for either Mac or, or Linux should be pretty similar. Um, and in particular, uh, today is sort of the only day we're going to be doing stuff that's Windows specific. So once we get our working environment set up, uh, you know it shouldn't shouldn't matter what kind of computer you're using. So you know if you can do what we're doing today, um, you know so if you happen to use a Mac or you use Linux, um, and you can do what we do today, then you shouldn't have any problem with the rest of the video ser uh, series essentially. So basically what we need to do is to install a little software, uh, a Python interpreter, and a few libraries. Um, libraries are essentially uh, extra functionality that we're going to make use of, right? So there's going to be a number of things we're going to be doing, and we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, so if there's resources that we can use to make those things easier, we're going to take advantage of them. So I mentioned in the first video that we're going to be using IPython, the interactive uh, Python environment. And so let's just let's get to it. So I went to ipython.org and I clicked on install and I'm going to find Windows. And it turns out that if you want to use uh, Python on Windows, it's easiest, uh, like I suggest here, it's easiest to essentially install one of several uh, distributions such as Anaconda or Anthot Canopy. So these package both the uh, the compiled Python distribution along with a, vi a variety of useful utilities. Okay, so I clicked on Anaconda. Anaconda is what we're going to be using. I'm going to scroll down, get the download started, because it's, it's kind of big. So we're looking for Windows, 32-bit. Okay. So as I mentioned, this is a Python distribution. Uh, so it, as it says, you know, this is sort of a note for, for people in the future. Oops, clicked the wrong button. Sorry. Okay, so a note for people in the future. It says, please note, the Anaconda default install comes with Python 2.7, and if you're interested, you can also use 2.6 or 3.3 by, uh, by changing the setup, essentially. So we are going to be using Python 2.7. Uh, maybe it's worth mentioning, <laughs> mentioning why. Uh, in particular, you see that it mentions Python 3 here, and since 3 is bigger than 2, you know, why aren't we using the newest version of Python? So it turns out that the, the different versions of the Python programming language are, uh, well, they're fairly different. Um, so, so Python 2 and Python 3 aren't necessarily different languages completely, but they aren't entirely compatible either. So it turns out that so many people have used Python 2 for so many years that, you know, so, many, so much experience and so much available tools uh, for using Python 2. Uh, so Python 2 is still sort of the, the primary the primary version of the language that people use these days. So there hasn't really been a complete transition to Python 3 yet. And in particular, uh, you know, some of the equity calculation libraries that we use are going to assume Python 2. Um, so that's why for what we're going to do here, we really need Python 2.7. So in the future, you know, I don't know when people are going to be watching these videos, in the future, if you you know if you do this in a few years, maybe Anaconda will have converted to Python 3. And you'll need to make sure that either you know you use Python 2 anyway, or uh, that the hand evaluation libraries that we're going to install in a minute, uh, you know that you have an updated version of that also. So there needs to be compatibility between uh, the versions of the two things that we're installing today. That's all I'm saying. The other thing to note is that I went for the 32-bit version of the Windows installer. And the reason for that is also compatibility with the uh, the poker eval libraries, the equity calculation libraries that we're going to be using. So again, you need compatibility there. So this is maybe a, a limitation of the, what we're going to be doing. So 32-bit basically means that the programs we write will only be able to access so much memory. And if you want to study very large games, um, you know you need to access lots of memory. So if you do, you know, in the end, after this series is over, in the future, want to do very large calculations, then you'll need to replace what we install here with the 64-bit version. And we'll need to, uh, 
you know, find a compatible hand, evalu hand evaluation library as well to go along with it. So the issue here, uh, the reason why we, are, why we aren't doing that right off the bat, is that the hand evaluation library called Poker Eval or, or Pi Poker Eval, uh, which is essentially going to be the, the basis of our equity calculator, which, as you can imagine, is a very very fundamental part of what we're doing. Uh, they, they don't actually, um, well. There's a number of hand, eva hand uh, evaluation libraries, but there's one in particular that's open source and very well polished, and it, it's very fast. So that's why we want to use it. However, unfortunately, they don't provide a Windows version, right? So, so a third party, however, has provided a Windows version, uh, and that is the Free Poker DB project. Okay, so I have a, a link here, and you can read the URL and. Uh, browse to it yourself. So sourceforge.net projects fpdb the free poker database files fpdb pi poker eval win32. Okay, so as part of this project, um, this is sort of an open source poker tracker or hold a manager sort of program. We're not going to be using that this program itself, but they provide essentially a a Windows version of this equity calculation library. So we're going to be leveraging what they've done, uh, you know, for our own purposes. So this is the second thing we need to download and install. Um, so I browse this web page, and so I'm going to click on this this first link, Poker Eval 138, Win32, Pi 2.7. So you can see again that the uh, the versions match up here. We're using the 32-bit version of Python, uh, as well as this library, and also Python 2.7. So let me go ahead and download that. So again, these are sort of the two things that you'll need to do if you're using a Mac or a Linux. Um, you need to install Python, and in particular, um, this is not only pure Python in this Anaconda distribution that we're about to install. It comes with a variety of, of things. It comes with uh, SciPy libraries and the NumPy libraries. Um, you know, don't worry if you don't know what they are because you know it comes with it if you're running Windows. Those are a couple extra pieces of functionality that you, you might need to install uh, if you're running Linux, for example. Okay. So basically, what we're going to do after, after these downloads finish uh, is that we're going to run the installers and then we're going to boot into our IPython environment, which is a, an interactive uh, programming environment that we're going to be able to uh, type commands into and it will give us results. And not only can we type commands, but we can also give it a Python code in order to develop more complicated functionality. Uh, it's actually a pretty powerful, flexible environment, and we'll be able to, uh, you know, make it do some pretty, pretty impressive things, as we'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna wait a couple of seconds until this download finishes, and then we'll, uh, we'll get to it. Okay, and then I'm just gonna click next a few times and install. Let me uh, pause the video while this is going. It'll take a couple minutes, but there's okay. So the installation completed. We just finish up, and now I'm going to install the second thing, this uh, Poker Eval library. So this is quite a bit quicker, I think. Next, 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 finish, and we're done. Great. Okay, so now we should be all set. So I'm going to go to open up this new program I've installed, Andaconda. I'm going to go to IPython, Pi 2.7, Notebook. Um, so we'll be using the Notebook interface to IPython, which essentially should, uh, should pop up this window, but then it should start a new page in the web browser. Here we go. And here we are. Here's the uh, the IPython dashboard, right? So the way this works uh, is that you can make a uh, you can make a notebook. They're called notebooks, and, and notebooks are where we're going to be doing our work. Uh, and in particular, we're just going to be using one notebook. So let me make a new notebook, 
and I can retitle it by clicking on Untitled. Let's call it a uh, whatever we want, poker. Okay, so here we are. Uh, essentially, we can type commands into these input blocks, and it'll give us output. So if I type 5 plus 4, click Run, it'll say 9. So that's promising. <laughs> Uh, and just to make sure that that uh, high poker eval thing installed correctly, let's type import uh, poker eval and click run again. And if there are no errors, then everything was successful. Okay, so here we are. I think I'll end this video here and get right into the next one where we do something useful. Um, if everything on your computer has gone like mine, then you're ready to continue. Um, if you got any errors when you try to run this import poker eval command, then something needs to be fixed. Uh, but hopefully that didn't happen, and I'll see you guys next time.